A couple of weeks ago, a commenter had a really good idea. They asked to see my morning routine. And although I don't do the same thing every morning, since some of my animals are fed every other day, some are fed once a week, like most of my snakes, um, it, I thought it was still a good idea. So here's a video showing a little bit of what goes on when it comes to taking care of all of my animals. <laughs> My day usually starts cleaning Cheyenne's cage. Cheyenne is my 18 year old blue and gold macaw. And if you didn't already know this, I was really into birds before I even got introduced to reptiles. I've had several macaws and African gray, some other birds too, but Cheyenne I will always have. Next, I move on to cleaning the bins. This isn't a full cleaning, but rather just a spot cleaning of all of my snake bins. And I'm really just checking to make sure all the snakes look good. I'm removing any dirty areas or soiled areas where they've pooped and making sure their water is topped off. I kind of just routinely go through all of the bins to check on them all. I give a little extra care to the uh, tricolor hog noses here since they have a newly set up enclosure with tropical soil now too. And then I just keep on going along. This is my conda hog nose that recently had babies. I have some baby hog noses in that bin. And each bin that is empty actually contains a snake that's down in brumation or hibernation in the basement right now. Then I move on to my next snake rack, which has some of my bigger snakes. And for Janet, my bull snake up here, I needed the bag. He went to the bathroom quite a bit. So there's a bit more spot cleaning involved in that bin. Sometimes the snakes think I'm bringing food, like Stanley here. He's looking at me, hopeful, hoping that I have food for him, but sorry, Stanley, not today. This is one of my fox snakes. Ugh. And then there was Popeye. He laid a big poop, I guess, overnight at some point. So his does require a complete cleaning. Usually it's just spot cleaning, but in instances like this, I have to take everything out and just kind of spray down the whole bin so that it's clean again. When a Burmese python poops, it is not pretty. But he doesn't mind just hanging out on the floor while I clean. He's such a chill snake, it's great to have him around. When I clean out their bins, I spray them down with a diluted vinegar solution. I often use bleach too, very diluted bleach, but when I'm going to put the snake in relatively soon after cleaning, I like to use the vinegar instead. And finally, I move on to the last snake rack upstairs. On this rack, I have just some more bull snakes, some more hog noses, nothing really out of the ordinary. After spot cleaning the snake bins, I have to take out food for some of my other critters. I'm going to remove a bunch of dubia roaches that I need for the day's feedings. And I usually start with feeding my smaller critters like my toads and my salamanders. They require a very specific size of dubia cockroach, so I have to spend probably about 10 minutes going through my cultures just to take out the size of cockroach that I need. And of course, I get a lot of help from Cheyenne when I'm taking out cockroaches. She has an odd fascination with the bugs. Uh, sometimes a little gets a little too curious. When I have all the roaches out, I'll take the toads out so they can start eating. And then I'll open up the salamander drawers and I'll feed them too. So the toads just kind of eat in the background and I'll pull the roaches from around the toads and just go through all the salamanders until they finally fill up or until I've decided that they've had enough. I have three tiger salamanders and they go through a lot of cockroaches. Sometimes they don't have the best aim either. They'll usually take about four or five cockroaches a day if I let them, or they'll eat several night crawlers. And of course, more attention for Cheyenne. She kind of butts her way into uh, all of my daily chores. She demands a lot of attention, but she's such a sweetheart. They're just about full here, so I'm going to put them back and then I'll let the toads kind of clean up the rest of their roaches while I move on to the next task. First, I have to put Cheyenne back, even though she'll probably find me somewhere around the house to help me out later, too. Next, we're going to feed the fish. I have all their food underneath in the cabinet. I feed mine Omega-1 cichlid pellets, even though I don't have a lot of cichlids. Actually, I don't have any cichlids anymore, but I've found that these pellets work really well for their color and they're slow sinking pellets, which my fish eat better than pellets that float at the surface. And I also don't use flakes because those just leave too much of a mess. Next, we'll give a couple algae wafers to my Plecostomus. There's a few bristlenose plecos and a royal pleco in there. Next, we're gonna say hi to Rex. Hi Rex. 
He's going to be expecting food, but we're actually not feeding him today. Are you hungry? I'm not feeding you right now, no. Instead, we're gonna feed the turtles. They get a variety of different brands of turtle pellets. There's Reptamin, there's Zumed, there's Tetra brand pellets. I give them a variety of different brands so that they get a variety of different nutrients that each one contains. But half the time, they just swim towards my face, expecting attention instead of looking at their food. There's one little pain, it there she is, that's Michelle. She, all she wants is attention. She doesn't care if there's food around. She literally just wants to come out and be held because as soon as she's laying in my hand, she calms down and she just wants to sit there. It's adorable, but I kind of wish that she would focus on her food a little more. All right, next on the list is grabbing some quail eggs to feed Legolas. For this, I have to crack an egg, but I'm going to leave the shell on because legless lizards actually are used to crunching up snail shells in the wild. That's a staple of their diet. So I leave the shell on so they can crunch that up and get some calcium too. It's pretty easy to make his food. I'll just microwave it. It's not quite done yet after that first burst. So we're gonna throw it in for another eight seconds. That's better. Then I'll take some calcium powder and dust it with that or a multivitamin depending on the day and just slide it into his food dish and we're going to add some mealworms to his meal today too. And then we walk it upstairs and he's just in one of my bins. Kind of just curled up, he loves his half log. Here's your food. And he is fed for the day. Okay, now we're going to, since when I was going through the snake bins, I realized the egg eaters were out of eggs. They ate them overnight. So I'm going to replenish those and just scatter some quail eggs around their bin. All right, iguana is up next. We're going to give her a nice leafy salad today. On the menu for her are collard greens, along with one of her favorite foods, blueberries. And just like the legless lizard's food, we're going to dust her salad with a calcium powder. Then we will carry it upstairs. Then she'll give me the stink eye while she judges her food to see if it's worthy for Princess Ava. And I think she approves. Let's see if the larval salamander is hungry. This is not an axolotl, even though he looks just like one. They're very closely related. He is a larval salamander. You've seen him a few times in previous videos. Oh, he is not hungry. That's okay. We'll just move on to feeding some snakes that are due to eat today. For my younger snakes, I feed them twice a week. So we're going to feed just a few of my baby snakes right now. Some of them I've purchased because I'd like to raise them up for breeding purposes. We're going to need a few fuzzies and several pinkies for today's snake feeding. And of course I do not use this thermos for coffee. It's just for snakes. However, a lot of these snakes we're feeding are picky and they only eat it if they're scented with toads. This is really the only reason why I have the toads is for scenting purposes. Although the toads honestly don't seem to mind being used for scenting. Another trick is to put the rodents on the edges of the deli cups so that the snakes bump into them more. And these are all going to young hognose snakes. This one's a great eater. He dove after it right away. That one isn't even scented. He's probably one of my best baby snake eaters right now. This one we have to scent, and for both of the snakes down here, they also need their food to be scented, but that's okay. As long as they eat, I will do whatever it takes to get picky hognose snakes to eat. Then we'll feed the baby hognoses from my most recent clutch. They are being horrible eaters. None of them want to eat, but I'm trying several tricks with them. Today we're going to try the toad scented trick to see if that convinces any of them to eat. And if this doesn't work, then I will next move on to scenting with tuna juice. And after that, I will scent with egg yolk. I am determined to get these baby hognoses to eat before selling them to new homes, and I want them to be eating unscented pinkies. So it's going to be a little while before they're ready for their new homes. I feed them in smaller containers because it makes them run into their food more often, and I found that I have much better success at getting baby snakes to eat when they are fed in these containers as opposed to being fed in their normal enclosures. And finally, the last thing that I do is I feed the geckos. They usually wake up in the afternoon or in the evening, so this is something I do later in the day. For the one that's good at hunting, she eats the best inside of this deli cup. That way the roaches can't run away from her or dig into the substrate. However, the other three geckos are not so good at hunting, so I have to hand feed them all individually, which is kind of a pain, but you know, again, if it gets them eating, I will do it. Thankfully, Milton here 
is really good at catching her own roaches. These are all African fat-tailed geckos. I have one male that lives with three females, and even if he is hand-fed, he sometimes still misses the roach. This is Sophie. She was my very first African fat-tailed gecko. She is an amelanistic. After the roaches, I'll lift up their humidity box because underneath it, I have mealworms that just kind of breed on their own inside the substrate. So I'll take these mealworms. I think it started with a couple of scapies, but now they just breed on their own, which is great. So I have free food to feed my geckos. However, only one of the fat tails likes mealworms. Check out Chuck's response here when I try to feed him this mealworm. Ew, he says. He does not like that. Thankfully, Milton here will eat it. Just takes just the right amount of shaking. At least somebody eats the mealworms. Jeez. So there's a little glimpse into what goes on in my day-to-day -day chores. Uh, sorry this video wasn't super educational like the other ones have been. It was just kind of a fun one to make. However, stay tuned for next week. I have some exciting videos coming up, including a new snake that I'll be picking up soon that has a crazy rescue story behind him. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.